Hello, and welcome to this Band in a Box video tutorial on using our loops with style packs. Before we get into the tutorial, I will start by saying all the real styles used in this video come in the loops with style pack 2 and require a 2020 Band in a Box Ultra Pack, Ultra Pack Plus, or Audiophile Edition. We also have another loops with style video that includes a product overview and has demos for all the styles that come in the loops with style pack 2. This video will be more of a tutorial and will go over things like the installation of the loops with style packs. I'll show you where to find the loops with style pack content within Band in a Box. And then I will demonstrate a few different ways you can use the loops with style packs in both Band in a Box and other DAWs such as Reaper or Ableton Live. Now let's get started with the installation. First, I'll download the Loops with Style Pack 2 installer from the PG Music website by going to My Products. I'll scroll down a little bit until I see the Loops with Style Pack 2. And I'll just press the blue download text next to the package. And here we can see it's downloading. Once the download is complete, I'll navigate to my downloads folder and start the installation. This screen here just lists what we are going to install, so I'll press next. Now we select our install destination. In this case, it will be the E drive because I'm running Band in a Box from my external hard drive. For you, it may be the default C drive or an external device that you have as well, so I'll press next and then I'll just press install. Now that that is finished, we will open up Band in a Box. And the first thing we want to do after installing any updates, real tracks, or add-ons would be opening up our style picker and rebuilding the style list. So we will just press rebuild Choose Fast Rebuild, and then press Yes. Now that our style list has been rebuilt, let's have a look at the styles associated with the Loops with Style Pack 2. We will use the category dropdown to select Choose and Show User Categories. We will scroll down until we see Loops with Style, and then select Loops with Style Pack 2. Press OK. And now these are all the styles from the Loops with Style Pack 2. So let's just demo a few of the styles by double clicking on them. And every one of these styles has a demo song that includes a loop and can be loaded by pressing the load demo song button here. So now I'll just press OK. And you can see we have our song loaded with our chords and our loop over here in the mixer. So we'll just press play. And let's have a listen to the loop soloed. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Another way we can access our loops is by opening the loops picker. We can do this by right clicking on a track in the mixer and choosing select a loop for this track. Or by pressing the loops button in the toolbar. And then we will just type loops pack 2 in the filter. And now we can see all the loops that came with the loops with style pack 2. And we can demo the loops by double clicking on them just like we did in the style picker. You can see that the loops have an A loop, a B loop, and another loop with both A and B. You can choose the A loop for something more subtle. Or the B loop for something more energetic. If you choose the loop with both A and B, 
the A and B can be changed with part markers for a more dynamic feel to your song. So now if we go back to our demo song we loaded earlier, we can see this demonstrated. We can see the two part markers here, indicating the A and the B sections of the song. We can change our part markers just by clicking on them, but we want to leave them as they were. So now I'll just press play. And now we're listening to the A section, which is a little bit more subtle. And I'll solo the loop track so we can listen more closely to the change that happens at the B part marker. And now we're listening to our more energetic B part. Now I have the demo song loaded for our caraway style that includes a jaw harp loop. But before we take a listen, I'll open up the loops dialog again. And we have jaw harp typed in the filter. And like before, we have our A and B loops. But we also have these additional drone loop. But if we demo them, they both sound the same. However, you will notice below that the transpose type is different for each. The regular jaw harp loop will follow the chord root in the chord chart. The drone loop will follow the key root and will play whatever the song's key is set to. So we already have the first jaw harp loop selected up here in our mixer. So I will just press cancel on the pick a loop dialog and give this a listen. As you can hear, the jaw harp is following the chords in the chord sheet. So let's go back to the pick a loop dialog and we will select the drone loop this time and have another listen. I'll just press generate and play. And now you can hear no matter what is written in the chord sheet, the jaw harp is now sticking to the key root as displayed here in the key for our song. Now we have another demo song loaded for our despair style. You can see here in the chord sheet, we have some slash chords. First, I'm gonna select our bass track up here. Then I'm going to open up the loops dialog again. I'll type in loops pack bass. As usual, we have our A, B, and our AB. I'll choose this acoustic bass. You will notice this time, the transpose type says chord slash root. And there is also another option that just says chord root as well. If we pick chord slash root, it is going to play the bottom note of our slash chord. But if we pick chord root, it will play the top chord. So we will just pick chord root and press OK. And I will solo the bass track so we can hear it better. Then I'll generate and play, but I'll skip forward to bar five so we can hear our slash chord at bar six. Now we can hear it's playing the top chord. Let's press stop, open up the loops dialog again, and we will choose the exact same loop, but change our transpose type to chord slash root. Press OK, generate and play, skip to bar five and listen to the difference. And now you can hear it playing the bottom chord. We don't have to use the loops directly in Band in a Box. We can also use the loops in other DAWs such as Ableton Live or Reaper. I currently have a blank Ableton Live set open and I have our Band in a Box folder open as well. I'll navigate to the Loops folder, which is within the Real Tracks folder. Then I'll open up Loops Pack 2 and we'll just go with Electronic. 
we can see our default tempo in Ableton is 120 beats per minute. But since our loops have acid info included when we import the loop, our Ableton set automatically adjusts to our imported loops tempo of 95 beats per minute. And we'll just take a listen. No matter what we change our tempo to, the loop will play along with that tempo. Now I have a new Reaper project open. Reaper works a bit differently than Ableton. I will drag in the exact same track file into Reaper as I did into Ableton. And we get this message here that states there is tempo information embedded in the audio and asks what we would like to do with the file. We can have Reaper ignore the tempo info and the project will stay at the default tempo and the loop audio will import at its native tempo of 95 beats per minute. But this is not what we want. We can see the audio does not fit the grid. So I'll drag in the same loop again, but on a new track. But this time I'll select adjust media to project tempo. And we can now see the second loop we imported is in line with the bars. So we can delete this upper track. We'll duplicate the loop a few times and press play. And now our loop plays in time with the Reaper project, no matter what tempo we change it to. Thanks for watching our video tutorial on installing and using the loops with style packs. Have fun!